Justin, in trying to understand our place in the world and how we understand the things we do, one of the most fundamental mechanisms that we have is the so-called theory of mind. Uh, what is that, and when does it start in our cognitive lives? You know, the theory of mind is our capacity to understand that other people have, well, have minds, have conscious uh, states, beliefs, desires that then motivate them to act. So we aren't just inert masses that sort of sit like lumps. And we're not like billiard balls that are just waiting to be struck by something else before we act. We can actually launch ourselves. We can go after each other. We can get each other to move just by making utterances or gestures and that sort of thing. Um, and that makes us special kinds of things out in the world. So theory of mind is that capacity to understand, first of all, that other people have mental states. But second, what's the nat nature of those mental states? Where do they come from? And how do they motivate action? Because they do have relationships, right? Seeing leads to forming percepts, or perceptual sort of information, which then leads to beliefs. And those beliefs guide us in our pursuit to satisfy our desires. And if our desires are frustrated, we have negative emotional states. And if our desires are satisfied, we have positive emotional states. Well, all of that we take for granted all the mm -hmm. time. Most adults, this is easy stuff, right? We just do it seamlessly, automatically. That's all thanks to our theory of mind system. Um, and as you say, it, it, it's got deep roots. It develops very early, uh, at least some aspects of it. It, it is a process of development. Um, sort of our earliest inklings seem to be in the first, oh, five, six, seven months of life. Mm. Um, at least our strongest evidence where um, babies seem to be sensitive in a different kind of way to objects that interact more like minded beings than billiard balls. There was already evidence around five months old with you know, discs on computer screens that they pick out when say two discs are chasing each other as opposed to just moving randomly around the They'll same They'll stare space. at that more. They'll show preferential a, looking yeah. um, at one display over the other, showing, giving us evidence that they know they see a difference here. Um, within that first year of life, they're more likely to make utterances when another person is in the room. Um, in lots of, uh, of these computer-based tasks where they see funny displays with moving objects, if, if one of them is an agent, uh, a human, or even just a hand, or even just a ball with a face on it, they view it in a very different way. They, make, they have different expectations about what happens there. Well, those are the early inklings of something that's going to turn into theory of mind. Um, is that innate? Uh, innate's a compli complicated word, but it, it's, it's at least very early developing and seems largely inevitable under normal developmental conditions. If that's what you want to call innate, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, sure cross-cultural, cross all cross cultures cultural. have it. It doesn't matter on the, the upbringing or the culture of, of, of the child. With it, within certain broad parameters, yeah. that's right. Obviously, just a pure dark room, you know. The, the yeah, so th it might be that in cases where children have been neglected or raised in isolation, right. that they might not develop normally in this right. regard. Right. So there are some exceptional cases, but in general, this is all over the place. Normal part of our toolkit, theory of mind. Well, that's important. Yeah. And what's, but um, where maybe some of the most exciting action takes place and where most of the research has focused over the last 30 years, a couple of exciting exceptions to this, but um, has been in sort of the, the three to five-year-old age range. This seems to be where some great stuff is going on, particularly around perspective taking, as it's sometimes called, understanding that your perspective is different than my perspective, and w the nature of beliefs. What are beliefs, and how do they yeah. map on the stuff in the world? Um, so for instance, um, uh, th there's a whole host of experiments out there. One that I like is uh, sometimes called the surprising contents task. Um, this is a task where you present children with a familiar container uh, so they have an expectation about what's inside of this thing. Um, one version I've used is a cracker box, right? Uh, saltine crackers mm -hmm. or something like that. And you show the child the cracker box and you say, see this box? What kind of box is it? And they say crackers. That's right, it's a cracker box. What do you think's inside of it? 
Well, duh, crackers, of course. It's a cracker box. Okay, yeah, well. And I opened the box and showed them. Actually, I've taken the crackers out and I've put rocks inside the box. Hmm. At this point, they look at me kind of like, well, what's wrong with you? <laughs> um, close the box back up. Can you see inside the box? No, okay, that's right. Do you know what's inside the box? Rocks. That's right, there are rocks in the box. So I should let you answer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and at this point, now you start the fun. Do they know there are rocks in the box and they've told you it's a cracker box? And they've already told you they expected there to be crackers. Mm -hmm. And then you ask, well, if your mom came in right now and she saw this box <laughs> for the first time, what does she think is inside the box? <laughs> and what would you say? Yeah, I mean, uh, with, uh, with my mother, she certainly knew there were rocks in there. <laughs> <laughs> she would know there are rocks in the box? Because yeah. your mother is all knowing. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the way that three year olds answer, right? Most adults, of course, would say, I don't know, mom would be fooled. There'd, there'd be crackers in the box, right? Um, Did you see a time difference uh, as children get older? They that's were... right. Be it seems that between ages three and five, something really exciting happens. Mm -hmm. Most children, not all children, but most children. So with three years old, they'd say the mother would think there are rocks because they, there are rocks. That's right. The, that's the right. mother knows everything. Mother seems to know everything. She seems to at least, whatever is out there to be known, she, she knows know. it. Mm -hmm. So if the child knows, I know there are rocks in the box, mom knows there are rocks yeah. in the box. It's like children hide by, by putting their hands in front of their eyes and think that that hides them. It's a little bit like that. And so it might be that children younger than that, when they try to hold something behind their backs or they try, try little acts of deception, they're not trying to get you to have false beliefs mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. where the cookie is. Mm -hmm. They just don't want you to act upon where the cookie is. Mm -hmm. Adults, we seamlessly blend knowing and acting. But for these young children, it looks like there's a little bit of a tension there. So if I hide the cookie behind my back, that'll keep mom from punishing me for taking the cookie. Not because she doesn't know it's there. If you ask the child, does your mom know the cookie's behind your back? They'll probably say yes, okay? But they also seem to know if for some reason, it doesn't matter, they don't have a good reason. If it's behind my back, mom isn't coming after me. <laughs> this sort of dynamic seems to be the case in terms of both knowing so beliefs, what does mom know? But also in terms of perception, what does mom see? As I was just demonstrating, right? What does mom hear? What does mom smell even? If it's a child, and we've done these little experiments too, you can put peanut butter in a little canister, let the child sniff it, well, first put it across the room. Can you smell what's in the canister? No, bring it up to them, let them sniff it. Peanut butter, that's right, put it way back over there. You know, put uh, a, a human right next to the, the child and say, you know, can so-and-so smell it? Oh yeah, it smells peanut butter. <laughs> can you, the fun thing is they even get confused about their own knowledge states, the three-year-olds. Mm. They, back to the cracker box, did you ever think that there were crackers in the box? No. Mm. They're not lying. They just don't seem to have really good, at least verbal access to their own mental states. Mm. There's some real fundamental confusion going on mm. there. Of course, you know, fast forward up to age five, well, now I understand that beliefs can be false. Five, six years old, seven years old, now I can start understanding really complex kinds of mental states like that you have a belief about my beliefs or that I have a mm. belief about your beliefs about my beliefs. Mm. <laughs> okay, what's sometimes called it's a higher order theory mm. of mind. Mm. And note that that kind of theory of mind is really important in our social interactions. So I come into the room, I can tell by your potty posture that you are angry with me, and I can run simulations about why might he be, why, why is Robert angry with me? Well, he saw me talking to uh, yeah. Susan, yeah. and he thinks that I told Susan that he, yeah. and so forth and so on. We can do this drama, at least a lot of us can do this drama pretty easily, thanks to our theory of mind.